so mass arrests will, may well if it's done with dignity. That's really important. That's 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 kind of the Gandhi and Martin Luther King way. You got to do this with dignity. Hold your head high. You are the victim of the injustice. You are the innocent person who's not throwing punches at the cops. The more, the merrier. I mean, it worked really well with Earth First too. A thousand people arrested, and all we did was go up right to the edge of a privately owned redwood forest that never did get cut down, thanks to all the Earth First actions, which I was mainly peripherally involved with, but um, thousand people arrested, that got big news. It totally pissed off the cops because they had to import cops from hundreds of miles away. This was six hours drive north of San Francisco and the San Francisco cops were even there. They were missing their football games. They were really mad because all these people, they'd walk across the property line, cuffs go on, put you on the bus, dump you in the middle of the farms and make you walk back. But, and then they didn't take everybody to court for trial because there would have been too many people. I mean, the yes men have said, hey, if 10,000 people get arrested and all demand a trial, then you've gridlocked the court system too. So you never know. And I also think that particularly bad corporate predator targets who have retail stores and the like and sell consumer products and not just build oil refineries or something, maybe that's where the sit-ins should be. This was a previous movement that started independently of Occupy Wall Street before, quite a while beforehand in England called UK Uncut uncut all these budget cuts that David Cameron, the conservative little twit prime minister, was putting in. I mean, just going for the throat of gutting education, anti-gang programs, the poorest youth were getting hurt the worst, thus those riots, where some of the people said, hey look, we see people strutting all their fancy stuff every day, we are never going to have any, and now Prime Minister Cameron has announced that we're never going to be able to go to a university, because now tuition is going to be way higher. This whole society never wants to employ us. They don't even want us here. We're mad. You know, some people, sure, it was a shopping spree, but others were walking out with disposable diapers and furniture and other things and, and food. And that was the reason why. So, but UK, this that's a little separate from UK Uncut. UK Uncut, what they did was, I guess it started with a dozen people meeting in a cafe, some of whom had never been to a protest before in their lives. And um, Cameron announced seven billion pounds of cuts in services to poor people. They found out that Vodafone, the great big phone company there, owed six billion pounds in taxes and had no intention of paying them. And Cameron praised their CEO as a great business leader right then, so they decided enough was enough we're going to fuck with Vodafone. So, on Saturday on Oxford Street in London, busiest shopping day of the week, busiest shopping street, the big trendy Vodafone store is blockaded by UK Uncut, who of course alerted the media who covered it too, and the Murdoch people sensationalized and other people thought, yeah. And so, not very long after that, other Vodafone stores started getting attacked in the same non-violent way all over England with people starting their own chapters independently similar to this no leaders no franchising system of UK uncut then they turned their attention to a trendy clothing store called Top Shop because the guy was very open about the guy who owns it hey, yeah I'm worth 300 million pounds I don't have to pay taxes why should I so they went after his stores too and I don't know where it's going to grow from here or whether Occupy is going to eclipse it now or not but I think going after particular targets that would be good for consumer boycotts, which is the only thing a lot of those businesses listen to, 
is another thing very much worth trying. You know, boycotts against, especially companies that youth are supposed to think are all trendy and the good guys, the, the clothing companies, the beer companies, things like that. Why not? Especially if the people who own those companies are funding really right-wing organizations like Coors Beer does or uh, the Domino's Pizza guy did when he owned it. You know, you follow the money and see who the really bad apples are. And especially if it's something that takes a lot of money off of youth, like pizza chain or something, you can nail them with a boycott. You know, things that other people who can't come down to the tents every day can do in their own lives. Just little things to get people to think about, okay, I don't want to be part of the corporate food chain anymore. What can I do without getting my head cracked by the cops and sitting up all nights at meetings arguing about anarchy and 911 conspiracy theories? And, uh, and the, the, the gateway drug Drug is to simply start you know, start thinking, okay, insurrection in the street, good. Insurrection in the voting booth, also good. You're not gonna get much done without both. Insurrection with our money, also really good. You know, no more money to chain stores, no more money to chain restaurants, as much as humanly possible. Yes, I flew on United Airlines to get here. We all do, we all have, every once in a while we tap into the corporate food chain or we wind up as miserable as the Unabomber. The only person as pure and politically correct as the driven snow I've ever heard of who completely cut himself out of the corporate food chain. And boy, did he suffer for his art statement, didn't he? Yeah. Living all alone in a cabin this size that he built himself, handcrafting bombs clear down to making the screws by hand and mailing them to people he didn't even know, all because he couldn't get laid. You know, there's got to be a better way. And what I'm getting at with that is... Um, all kinds of hardliners and, let's put it more politely, people who care passionately about different issues are already getting drawn to the Occupy movement like magnets. Some may even try to take it over, just as the Labor Party or the Democrats may try to take it over too. Hey, we're the only ones who can vote for who actually win. you got to trust us. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but uh, sorry, Obama, you may lose because of that very soon because you're too much like what's like Bush and the rest, but basic, basically I guess what I'm getting at with that is in order to get this out to more people, you know, my old saying, don't hate the media, become the media, it's not just blogs, it's not just the internet, it's one-on-one, -on -one, eye to eye with people's family, school, work, play, party, whatever, and even if they're spouting the worst kind of Howardoid Tea Party bullshit, you know, you can either tune them out, walk away, or you can at least try to reason with them and plant some seeds, even if they th tell you you're stupid, maybe they'll think about it. And sometimes it eventually changes people's minds. And also, I think what I was getting at is, if you come on too much like a more radical than thou fundamentalist preacher, you know, you're either uber vegan or you're the enemy, you know, you're not going to get enough friends, basically. Yeah. And even somebody who can't be as hardcore as to you know, like be here with the tent cities or whatever, but can come down occasionally or help or bring down some food or whatever you need, doing something is better than doing nothing. And what's also important with that is some people who really want to sustain this, and if you really want to get change out of this alone, some people may be here for years. How many people really want to be here for years? Some people may want their life back from time to time. And it's not betraying the movement or selling out. If somebody needs to take some time away, recharge their batteries, and then come back and kick more ass. It shouldn't be like Cindy Sheehan, a major force in the anti-war Iraq war movement because her son was killed there and she went from conservative suburban mom to camping outside Bush's ranch demanding he talk to her about the death of her son and she drew all this support and was considered one of the leaders of the anti-war movement but eventually people tugged her in so many different directions that she burned out and she put out a press release saying I'm resigning from the anti-war movement never should have come to 
the yeah. Yeah. And so then she walked away, and then before long, she was full of energy again, and she came back. It shouldn't have come to a resignation. You shouldn't feel like you have to do that. It's more like tag team pro wrestling. You know, when one person's pinned down, you slap the other one. Then they come in, and you go down and recharge, then you come in. So you need to rotate your rotate your forces from time to time to avoid the inevitable burnout.